brings people down uh, into the community to see the, uh, downtown Champaign. If you're looking to try something new, you've only got until tomorrow before some special menus are toast. I really enjoyed the uh, the one in the the helmet in the middle. This one here. After a leak to the internet, the U of I confirms it's looking at the possibility of new football uniforms. Here what some fans think of the designs. And before the big game on Sunday, Habitat for Humanity in Danville holds their own Super Bowl. ABC News Channel 15 News at 6 starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Liz Lohice. And I'm Doug Quick. Pleasantly surprised is how restaurant owners in downtown Champaign say they feel with this year's Restaurant Week. The event that started last Friday and goes through tomorrow brought patrons and local business owners together. ABC News Channel 15's Maureen Glisovic joins us live in the newsroom with more on tonight's top story. Maureen? Good evening, Liz and Doug. It's been quite the week for those with, of you with experimental taste buds. Center City Restaurant Week began January 27th and will last until February 3rd. And some people say it's a win-win situation for both businesses and food lovers. My husband and I were just down uh, last week, actually, we had some sushi at Cofusion and we saw the signs and we're like, oh yeah, we, we need to make a note to take advantage of this. Center City Restaurant Week is when many local restaurants put together a special menu with special prices for new and loyal customers. And residents say it's a great way to taste foods you may not otherwise try. It gives people an opportunity to see something or taste something or go someplace that they haven't been to before. They can experience something new. You know, that's always a good thing to broaden, broaden your horizons. It gives a chance to uh, showcase your product and uh, showcase the people who stand behind your product and give it a little something special to the community. Dublin O'Neill's and 301 Mongolia owner Amit Chopra says it's his first time participating in Restaurant Week and didn't think it would be such a successful turnout the first time around. We were uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, we joined Restaurant Week late in the game and uh, we put some pretty competitive specials out there and uh, the community seemed to take a liking to it. It brings people down uh, into the community to see uh, downtown Champaign. Uh, you know, we've done, a, or they, I should say, have done such great things with uh, revitalizing this area that it's good to, you know, get people out and to see it. Now, some people say Center City Restaurant Week can be a great outing for the whole family, but if you're not the type of person to want to haul all the kids to the restaurant, you're in luck. The Soto Theater is hosting the Class Act Interactive Drop and Dine. That's where parents can drop their children off for food and entertainment. Liz, back to you. Thanks, Maureen. And if you're interested in dropping your child off for Class Act, you can contact Natalie at the number on your screen. If you plan on heading out to the restaurants tonight or tomorrow, check out our website and click on Web Watch. We have a link directing you to all the restaurants participating this week. Many use the holiday season to do good for others, but there's a need all year long. The Eastern Illinois Food Bank says they're looking for volunteers to help with upcoming events. One of those events, a repack extravaganza. The food bank buys things like rice and trail mix in bulk so it gets delivered in large packages. They need the community to help put those items in smaller bags to be distributed. The volunteers are an absolutely critical part of doing that. Um, they have to get all of this rice bagged up for us and get it ready to go to the families in need. Now there are set dates for the repack extravaganza and many other opportunities to give back. For more information on how to help, Head to our website, WICD15.com, and click on Web Watch. Champaign police continue to seek the public's help in finding a man missing since the end of November. 49-year-old Renard Jackson was last seen leaving his home in the 1500 block of Holly Hill Drive on November 26th. Police say they are still aggressively searching and are asking anyone with information on his whereabouts to call Crime Stoppers at 373 TIPS. We also tried connecting with the family of Jackson today, but they have since moved from their home on Holly Hill Drive. Doug? Well, as we looked out today, we saw a variety of weather conditions with clouds and fog out to the northeast and clearing conditions to the southwest. It took a few hours for that fog to finally clear from our extreme northeastern counties, so temperatures were a, a lot cooler in this area than it was out to the southwest. Well, nothing showing up as far as precipitation is concerned. We continue to see clear conditions or at least a layer of thin clouds over much of east central Illinois. 44 degrees, the current temperature at Willard. Meanwhile, in 
Danville, 40 degrees, the temperature there with calm conditions. Well, we could see the redevelopment of some fog during the overnight, especially after midnight. By later in the day tomorrow, clouds will be on the increase, and by 10 o'clock tomorrow night, we could be looking at some rain moving into the area. Just in time for the weekend, I'll have all the details with the Storm Team 15 forecast coming up. Liz, back to you. Thanks, Doug. A day after Governor Quinn's State of the State address, many in the business community are reacting to his proposed agenda. ABC News Channel 15's Andrew Hansen has more. Well, another pattern that you can okay. slate type patterns. So At Solomon Colors in Springfield, they manufacture iron oxide pigments and decorative products for the construction industry. They have about 70 employees in Springfield. For President Rich Solomon, he says if the natural gas tax were to be abolished, it's hard to tell how much it will help them. As for the hiring veterans tax credit? Is it going to affect our, our hiring of employees? Uh, probably not. We make that decision based on our needs, not whether there's a tax incentive or not. That's why his take on the governor's proposals? I think all the programs were, I mean, well intended. I don't think anybody could argue that they're not great programs. But can the state afford to pay for them? In fact, the governor's proposals could cost the state about $300 million in revenue if they became reality. But the bottom line, Solomon would like to see more workers' compensation reform. He says the bill they passed last year hasn't helped much. As for the Illinois Chamber of Commerce, their reaction to the speech? Probably the most surprising and, and best received, I think, from the business community is going to be the call for a elimination of natural gas tax. That is a huge uh, cost to a lot of manufacturing. It be a real good boost. It was a surprise and, and a very welcome surprise. Abolishing the natural gas tax, something Quinn calls unfair, could save the average household in Illinois about 30 bucks a year. That's according to the Citizens Utility Board. Now, the National Federal of Independent Business issued a statement after Governor Quinn's State of the State address. They say, quote, we give the governor credit for dealing with a difficult situation, but he offered very little that would boost private sector investment and job growth. With a new head coach, we already knew it was a new era for Illinois football, but changes might extend to what the team wears on Saturdays. ABC News Channel 15's A.J. Bayadpour is here in the studio. A.J., it looks like new uniforms are on the way. Well, Doug, the U of I athletic department said today it's usually the coach's call as far as changing the look upon arrival. Although Tim Beckman hasn't said much on the topic, a leaked photo almost guarantees you'll see new Illini unis at Memorial Stadium. Since 1989, this has been the Illini look, give or take a few tweaks along the way. Well, the colors won't change, but a leaked photo shows the program is considering big changes. That many U of I fans wouldn't mind an overhaul. They're a little outdated. Um, I mean, if I had to give them a grade C plus. <laughs> Although these helmets are officially options, an unofficial design caught the eye of those on campus. I like the helmet a lot. This uh, the headdress helmet. That's actually pretty awesome, and I hope we get those. But one fan liked it so much, he even reached out to those in charge. I sent an email to Mike Thomas and Tim Beckman. Just with that picture, and told them that that this helmet could get uh, get some alumni support back in. The athletic department said in an email it is talking to Nike about different uniform options. As for that headdress design, we were told it's not going to happen. It doesn't surprise me. I didn't think they would. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think it represents the chief at all. While it's a fun topic for fans. They know it's not that important. Honestly, I'd just rather them play better football, but I mean, <laughs> um, I guess, you know, that, that would be kind of be cool uh, to see them in, in different uniforms and to see them, you know, express themselves differently. It's a new era. And if it takes Coach Beckman a couple of years to build up the program, they say a new look couldn't hurt. I guess we can lose in style. <laughs> Well, hey, maybe they can win right away. Now, there's still a slight possibility the team keeps the current uniforms. If there is a change, the athletic department says it likely wouldn't be until 2013 since Nike would need to know the final design well in advance. Doug? You know, the person who designed the headdress-style helmet has a new look for every team in the Big Ten. You can check them out from our website. Just go to WICD15.com and click on Web Watch. The big game is just a couple days away, but in Danville, another type of Super Bowl is underway. And remember Lou Tepper, the former Illini head coach, has found a new job. Find out where former football coach Tepper has landed still ahead in sports.
police sergeant battles for his badge. Find out why his bosses want him off the force and how much money taxpayers are shelling out in the case. And that's tonight on ABC News Channel 15. Some big changes are right around the corner to make school breakfasts and lunches healthier. The USDA recently adopted new guidelines for school meals, which will go into effect on July 1st, the official beginning of the next school year. Some examples of the changes from the current guidelines for lunches, one half cup of fruits and vegetables per day will become three quarters to one cup of fruits, plus the same for vegetables. At least half the grains must be whole grain rich, white milk must be 1% low fat, and flavored milk completely fat free. They're cutting back on the starches, which is a good thing. And, and they were talking about, you know, getting rid of potatoes altogether. Well, they didn't do that. So they at least kept, you know, because kids do like potatoes. Uh, you just don't serve as many. That's all. The new rules also affect school breakfasts in similar ways, including offering more fruits and vegetables. It's a different kind of Super Bowl for Danville's Habitat for Humanity. They served chicken noodle soup and vegetable beef soup at the First Presbyterian Church as a way to raise money. Just $6 filled your stomach and heart as the money went to a good cause. The executive director of Habitat says this event really helps them because people tend to forget about the organization this time of year. It gets our uh, organization into the people's minds when we're, when we're not really building houses. And it raises funds at a time when we usually have a hard time raising funds. So we, it's a great time for us. Graves says events like today could not be done without the help of people and businesses in the community. And many of you will be heading out for the actual Super Bowl, which has the Illinois Department of Transportation and the Illinois State Police sending out a reminder, drive sober or get pulled over. The ISP says traffic volume increases significantly significantly around the big game and they will be out looking for impaired drivers as well as seat belts. If drinking will be involved in your night, they encourage you to stay put and sleep it off. Doug? Well, we woke up to fog this morning. Hopefully you had your headlights on as you traveled about earlier today. The fog eventually burned off and did allow some sunshine to reach uh, much of east central Illinois and west central Indiana. We've had a variety of weather conditions though throughout the day. Well, tomorrow we've got some rain moving into the area. We'll detail all of that with a Storm Team 15 forecast. It's coming up next. Hey, welcome back to ABC News Channel 15. Sullivan Park Hill Tower Cam looking out to the southwest and watching some pre-sunset activity there with a thin layer of clouds that were overhead earlier this morning. 32 degrees and extremely foggy conditions and also brought about a dense fog advisory a little earlier this morning. 54 degrees though the high today. A little cooler in areas out to the northeast. Earlier we were looking at 40s out across uh, Indiana, Benton County, 46 there, 45 degrees in Watsika. A little warmer out to the southwest, even seeing 57 degrees in Decatur, 47, the high today in Danville. Meanwhile, our current temperatures now down into the 40s, still a little cooler out to the northwest, looking at upper 30s to around 40 degrees at temperatures there. And as we look out across east central Illinois at the current time, we were watching that fog clear earlier. You can see it sort of sweep to the northeast. Now we're seeing a thin layer of clouds. All of that moisture from a storm system that will eventually make its way up into our area as we get into the weekend. Mild condition, conditions will move out to the east. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're seeing this storm system move up into our area. So clouds will be on the increase throughout much of the day on Friday. And then here comes that storm system bringing us that opportunity for rain. And right along the northern edge of that Saturday night into early Sunday, we might even see a little bit of frozen precipitation before it finally moves out of the area. 35 degrees for the overnight tonight could see the redevelopment of some fog by early in the day tomorrow. So another chilly start to the day. But keep in mind that overnight low is still above the average high temperature for this time of year. 52 degrees, the high tomorrow with uh, sunshine, at least partly sunny conditions early. After the fog burns off, we'll see more clouds through the afternoon and then that rain begins to move up into the area and that's the way it's going to look as we get into the weekend. Rainy conditions from late Friday into the day on Saturday. And as I mentioned, 
Late Saturday night into very early Sunday, we could see a little bit of frozen precipitation in the form of some rain snow mixture, maybe even some sleet in there as well. But that's just a slight chance. Hopefully, this uh, system will move out of the area and start to dissipate even before we get to that point. 45 degrees with a few rays of sunshine on Sunday. But looking ahead over the next seven days, we're still anticipating seeing temperatures well above average for this time of year, at least over the next seven. And looking at the uh, forecast, long range, 8 to 14. 14 days out, we're still looking at temperatures being slightly above average for this time of year and also drier conditions as well. So at least through the mid-February, we're looking pretty good. I have few complaints. No complaint from me. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. With the game on the line against Michigan State, Tracy Abrams, Abrams stepped up in a big way. Here from the freshman point guard, next in sports. Welcome back. As Illinois basketball gets set for the home game Sunday against Northwestern, ABC News Channel 15's Mike Letterer has more. Mike? Well, Liz, since Tracy Abrams joined the starting lineup on January 4th at Northwestern, he's seen his role continue to grow, and the freshman, he's proven he can handle the responsibility. With the game on the line and his team down by three, the Illini turn to their freshman point guard, and Tracy Abrams delivered. What some, some coach said at the end of the game, you know, um, in the locker room, um, show your character. And he said, told Tracy that he showed his character at the end, so that's a big shot. You know, when we need him to step up and make, you know, big plays like that, um, you know, throughout the season. With senior point guard Sam Maniscalco battling an ankle injury, the 19 year old freshman has been thrust into a starting role. In seven games since becoming a starter, Abrams is averaging over 25 minutes per game, but he insists his new role hasn't changed his mindset. Uh, I, I just had the same approach every game. I would say, you know, just go out and play hard and uh, bring something to the team. Uh, any Anything to help the team win, uh, that's been my main focus all season. You know, Tracy, he loves to play. I mean, he we play that three on three, four on four with the young guys. And, you know, Sunday, I told him not to, and he was in there playing. He said, I got to be in with my guys. Um, he has a knack. He's got that. That toughness, that pipe piper, and he just wants to win and you know be part of something special. The Illini will need Abrams to continue to progress for the 2012 season to turn into something special. And turning our attention to football, one day after National Signing Day, both the future and the past for the Illini in the news. Former Illinois head coach Lou Tepper has accepted the defensive coordinator position at the University of Buffalo. In five seasons as head coach at Illinois, the now 66-year-old Tepper compiled a 25-31-2 record. Meanwhile, the present-day Illini are now focused on their off-season workouts and the upcoming spring game, with former wide receiver Aurelius Ben set to coach one of the squads. We haven't named the other one yet. I just asked Regis yesterday if he'd be willing to be the head coach of one of the teams. And since he said yes, I let him choose his color. He said orange. So he's the head coach of the orange. He'll have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator that he's going to name later. And then we'll get uh, we'll, we'll have uh, Coach Buckus help us with the uh, blue coach. And he'll name his offense and defensive coordinator later. We'll have a draft. We'll do it just like it's a game. The winners will eat steaks, the losers will have beans and weenies. So mark your calendars. The spring game just 72 days away on April 14th. And one final note, Indianapolis Colts quarterback Peyton Manning has officially been medically cleared to return to the football field. That's it for sports. Liz, back to you. Thanks, Mike. And here's a look at what's on tap for 10. Tim Beckman has named Aurelius Ben as one of the coaches for Illinois spring game. Here from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver on coming back to campus. Plus, before their matchup against Illinois, Northwestern in action tonight against Nebraska. And we'll check in with Indianapolis with Super Bowl 46 just under 72 hours away. And here's a look at tonight's stock market report. We'll be right back. It was an interesting day weather-wise. Uh, when I left home in northern Vermilion County this afternoon, a little bit after 1, we were just starting to break through the fog and the clouds at that point. 
Temperature was around 44 degrees. By the time I was in Champaign, it was 10 degrees warmer and the sun was out. So uh, depending on where you were today, you may have experienced a much different picture. ESP Live not showing any precipitation. Might see some fog again early in the day tomorrow. Uh, so far, it doesn't look to be as dense as it was earlier this morning. 52 degrees will be the high tomorrow. Clouds will be on the increase. Rain moving in from late Friday into the day on Saturday. In fact, Saturday looks to be a total washout. And that may even last into early Sunday. Might see a bit of a wintry mix during the late night, Saturday night into early Sunday. But that's a look at the seven-day forecast. It's available online at WICD15.com. All right. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you back at 10.